What is calculus? Well, calculus can kind of be broken down into two main concepts, derivative and the integral. In this video, I'm going to talk about what derivatives are very briefly, but mostly focus on mechanically what's the math behind, what are the procedures behind, how do you find the derivative? So first of all, in layman's term, you can think about the derivative of a function as the slope of that function. Now, for a line, it's pretty straightforward. If you have an mx plus b equation, it's just the m. So if a line was 3x plus 4, the 3 is the slope, right? And, and, and you're done, no matter where you're looking on that function. But what if your function was not a straight line? What is the slope of a parabola? So if your function was like this, uh, and you were asked to find the slope of that guy, you know, your answer is probably that uh, it depends. And that's right, it does depend. Somewhere over here on the left, uh, the slope is negative. Somewhere here on the right, the slope is positive. And if we want a specific number, we'll have to, you know, be even more fine-grained with that. So overall, the, uh, long story short, calculus, derivatives in particular, are a way for us to look at a nonlinear function and for us to say this is the slope at all these different points. So basically, the answer to the question, what is the slope of a parabola, is that it's basically a function. And once you plug in a specific x value, you'll get the slope. So for example, here, if I were to just ask you in this regular f of x equals x squared function, if I were to say when x is 3, what's y? You know, basically, if I'm asking what's f of 3, you'd say that's 9, right? 3 squared. All right. But, and here's where the notation comes in for derivatives or slopes. If I were to ask you what's f prime of 3, first of all, what this question is asking is, it's saying, what's the slope of this parabola when x is 3? So really, it's talking about the steepness there. And as we'll see shortly, that's going to be 6. And we'll see exactly why for this guy, the slope over there is going to be exactly 6. But that's conceptually what it means. If I were to ask you what's the slope when x is at some negative value, when x is negative 10, as you'll see here, the slope is going to be a negative number, right? Uh, but anyway, other notation for representing the derivative are things like this. So you have f prime, or you could even just say y prime, uh, but also there's this dy over dx. And finally, this partial d. So really, this, this sort of notation is sort of just partial dy over dx, but that, that'll come in handy more when we have more than two variables. But in either case, let's look at the main algebraic rule for finding the derivative, which is called the power rule. The power rule basically says this, that if your function y equal is some sort of power function, meaning it's in the form a x to the power n, where a is a constant and n is a constant, then the derivative of this guy, all you have to do is you have to take this exponent down and multiply it out front. So this is going to be a times whatever that exponent was, n. And then you keep the x, and then you just subtract 1 from that exponent. So this is what most calculus texts will have as like the power rule. That's how you use the power rule to find the derivative when you have a power function. So if you have two power functions added to each other, the derivative is just going to be, you know, you take the derivative of this guy plus the derivative of that guy. But in either case, let's just take a look. So what's, let's apply the power rule to this set of problems. First, what's the derivative of this function here? y equals 3x plus 4. Well, let's just go term by term. What's the derivative of 3x? Well, using this power rule, 3x, let's see, 3x, well, x is to the power 1, right? So applying this rule, you just take the 1 down and multiply it. So that's really 3 times 1 times x, the what power subtract 1 from the exponent. 1 minus 1 is 0. That's really 3x to the 0, which is just 3, because x to the 0 is 1. All right, so the derivative of this guy is just 3. And what about the derivative of 4? Well, the derivative of any constant is 0. The reason is technically the power rule. If you were to apply this power rule here, you can erase this work. If you were to apply the power rule, 
4 can be written as 4x to the 0th power, right? Because x is 0, x is just 1. You take the 0 down, you multiply it 0 times 4 times x to the 0 minus 1 is just negative 1. But in either case, it's 0 because you have 0 times something. So we can actually generalize here that the derivative of any constant is always 0. And the derivative of this, this really linear structure, this uh, constant times uh, your variable is just going to be that constant. So in general, this, the derivative here, the y prime, is just going to be 3. A shortcut here is, of course, this is just an mx plus b function, so the derivative, the slope, was just going to be that 3 anyway. But now we know how the power rule could be applied to that, and we'd still get that same answer. So long story short, the derivative of, again, ax plus, or like mx plus b, right, using the power rule is just going to give you m, right? So that's just something to keep in mind. But all right, but now let's actually apply it. Let's apply that here. So what about this guy? Well, that's just a constant. So the derivative is zero. Y prime of this guy is zero. What about this? Pi x. Don't let the pi fool you. That's no different than 3x, right? This is just some constant times our variable. And again, using the power rule, we just deduce that that's going to be whatever that constant was. Because again, you take the one down, multiply it. You left with an x to the zero. That's just one. So you just have one times the constant. So again, long story short, the derivative of a constant times the variable is just that constant. And again, the derivative of a constant on its own is zero. All right, well, now let's take a look at this 10x to the eighth. Now, applying the power rule, the eight comes down. And so multiplying, so we get the 10 here, the eight comes down, and then you're left with x to the seventh power because you subtract. 1 from the 8, and so 10 times 8 is 80, so really it's just 80 x to the 7th power. Pretty straightforward. Notation-wise, again, it doesn't really matter whether this is called y or f of x, it's just, you know, uh, y prime or f prime would be what you'd call the derivative. What about this guy? So first of all, what's up with this p thing? Well, that's just a little trick there. p, x, it really doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're consistent with what your x variable is. The way this is written, your x variable is really called p here. So we're treating p the way we would normally treat x. So this is no different than like 6 root x. But it might seem like, wait, the power rule doesn't apply to this guy, right? Because that's not in this format of ax to the n. But it actually is. Because the first what I would do is I would rewrite this as 6 p to the 1 half power. Because root p is the same thing as p to the 1 half. And now if I were to take the derivative here, so the f prime of p, if you will, the derivative. Let's see, same rule. The n, whatever the exponent is, comes down and multiplies to the constant out front. So 1 half times 6, that's just going to be 3 out front. And then you're left with p to the power of whatever you had, minus 1. A half minus 1 is negative a half. So that's your answer, 3p to the negative half, which if you were asked, you could also rewrite that without that negative fractional exponent and say 3 over root p, if the question asked for it. But anyway, what about this guy? Same thing, where it looks like it might not apply, but it actually does, because you can rewrite this as 19x to the negative 1. So the power rule is actually really broad. It basically lets us take the derivative of almost any function you might encounter, um, including things with radicals or things with x's in the denominator. Because you rewrite it like this. And now again, same same thing. Let's let's find the derivative by doing the same power rule. Take the negative one, multiply it out front, so you get negative 19 instead of 19, times x to the negative two, because you have negative one minus another one. Which of course again you could rewrite this as negative 19 over x squared if you wanted to. So that's the power rule. But that being said, that's not all. There's also this thing called the exponential rule which is what you're going to use to find the derivative of an exponential function. Now, power function, exponential function, they might sound the same, but the difference is where is your variable? Is your variable in the base, or is your variable itself in the exponent? If your variable itself is in the exponent, like this guy, then the power rule uh, does not apply, because this is not a power function, it's an exponential function. So here, a really common mistake is a lot of people would look at this and say, oh yeah, that's going to be, they take the x out front, 
and so that's going to be x phi to the x minus one. Uh, but again, that's wrong because that only works if it was a power function. So this is an exponential function. So what is the exponential rule? Well, the rule itself is this: that basically, if you have you know some function a to the power of or some constant a to the power of x, that the derivative is just going to be. So if this is your y. The derivative is just going to be ln natural log of a times a to the x. So really, the derivative is literally equal to the original function. So the original function was a to the x. The derivative is literally equal to that, but just multiplied by this constant. The, the ln of some number is just another number. So really, this is just we're multiplying some constant to the original function, and that's the derivative. And that constant is always just ln of that number. So this is then pretty straightforward. The derivative of phi to the x is just ln of phi, some constant, times the original phi to the x. All right. The derivative of e to the x, e is just some number. So the derivative is still going to be just ln of e, right? ln of that number times e to the x. But this is a special case because ln of e happens to just be the number 1. So this further simplifies to just e to the x. And so now, you might have, if you've taken calculus before, this might be familiar that the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, but that's a special case of this exponential rule. Uh, finally, there's this logarithm rule where if you have the, so if the function is the ln of something, so the derivative of the ln, so if your y is just ln of something, ln of x, let's say, then the derivative is just 1 over the thing that was on the inside. So if it was the ln of x plus 3, the derivative is just going to be 1 over x plus 3. Now there's going to be other rules involved, including the chain rule if this inside is more complicated, or there's a product and portion rule, and all those will be covered in the next few videos.